Not too hot and not too cold. In many ways, these are the perfect stars. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to be looking at K-class and G-class main sequence stars. So, let's get to it. Before we get going, don't forget to check out our Brightest Stars series where we feature famous stars like Canopus, Capella, Ritual or Vega, and others like Red Dwarf Stars or Castor and Pollux and Gemini Twins. So check that out on the channel pages. So, what about those perfect stars then? In this graphic, we start with the smallest to the largest of these type of stars. The K-class ranges between 0.5 to 0.8 solar masses, with a temperature range of 3,900 to 5,200 Kelvin. K-class stars have a lifespan of 34 billion years and emit much less UV radiation than their G-type cousins. They're also not prone to solar flares like M-class dwarf stars, and they really are the best stars in our search for life. Now we see the G-class stars appearing. They range from 0.18 to 1.15 solar masses and a temperature range of 5,300 to 6,000 Kelvin. Although people think of them as yellow, they're really white in colour and Raleigh scattering makes them appear more yellow through our own atmosphere. G-class main sequence stars have a lifespan, as we know, like our sun of around 10 billion years. The final star, of course, is the smallest in the next class A, which as we can see, is a different category altogether. So where are the nearest K and G class stars? Of course our own sun is the closest, and it's a G2 B star because it has a higher than usual surface temperature, although its radius is smaller than average. Then the Alpha Centauri binary of G and K class stars together. Epsilon Eridani, at just over 10 light years, has a sub-Jovian planet. 61 Cygni is a binary pairing of K5V and K7V stars, both barely making this category. Tau Ceta, after our Sun, is perhaps the most famous of all G-class stars and has a substantial planetary system. Next is Epsilon Indi, which is a K5V E star and this means it has hydrogen emission lines. Groombridge 1618, barely even in this class at all, is one of the smallest in our local area. Next, Omicron Eridani is a K0.5 V class star and is almost in the G-class whereas the binary pairing of 70 Orpheuchi A and B contains a K0 V star, which pushes the limits indeed of the K class along with another mid-range K5 companion. Sigma Draconis is another on the limits, and some consider it a K class star. A G9 V is sometimes known as Al Safi, it's clearly a very stylish star indeed. Gliese 570 on the other hand is unremarkable. And finally, the last ones we see here, Eta Cassiopeiae A is the second brightest star of its class within 20 light years, after Rigel Cantorus, of course, also known as Alpha Centauri A. It also has a much dimmer K class companion as we see here. So, what would some of these stars look like if we were to view them from Earth? Let's see. First, for reference, the Sun is a G2b star that reaches the high category because of its warmer than usual surface. Here we see it depicted. Next, Ptolemy, also known as Alpha Centauri b, is on the limit of K-class stars at 0.5 solar luminosities. Beta Canum Venaticum is some 27 light years away and with 1.3 solar luminosities is one of the brightest local G-class stars as we can see depicted here. Next, the beautiful Tau Ceti, smaller than the Sun, but at 0.55 solar luminosities only makes about half the brightness of our own star. Epsilon Indi shows us that there is actually a distinct difference really between the higher and the lower classes of the K and K class. Here we see it at 0.22 solar luminosities. And finally, Groombridge 1618, the smallest of its own K class star in our local area. At just 0.14 luminosities, it's barely out of the red dwarf M category yet at all. It's very normal to find K class stars in binary pairings. Here we see a depiction of an Earth-like planet in the Goldilocks zone of orbit, orbit around 61 Cygni A. Its other sister companion can be seen in the far distance, and the pairing is some 11.5 light years distance from the Sun and has an orbital period of 659 years. Interestingly, the pairing is approximating our own solar system, and if you could live until the year 20,000, at 9 light years distance they would become a fairly bright star of 3.42 magnitudes. We can see our own sun of course here for relative size reference now, although of course the planet would immediately become a lot more luminous. The 61 Cygni binary can be 
deciphered with relatively modest telescopes, and we can see this here in the picture on the bottom right of the screen. Our next graphic depicts an imaginary scene from a planet orbiting the binary pairing of Eta Cassiopeiae A and B. A G-class and K-class pairing at 19.5 light years distant, you can probably see, or you will be able to see now, that they're a bit of a mismatch. They share a very irregular orbit between themselves and it varies from as, as close as 36 astronomical units all the way out to 106 astronomical units, some two and a half times the sun Pluto distance. It's thought that the safe zones of these stars, an area where planets could survive and not be disturbed by the partner star, is around 9.5 astronomical units for the bright Eta Cassiopeiae A and around 7.1 for its dimmer companion. Next we move on to one of my favourite stars, the wonderfully named Sigma Draconis. It's 18.8 light years and in many ways it's an in-between star, bridging the gap between K and G classes. It's believed to have 12, a huge 12 Jovian mass planet orbiting within its Goldilocks zone. Maybe one of the moons of this strange world could harbour life, just like we see this wooded planet here. Sigma Draconis is the fourth nearest G-type star after the Sun, Alpha Centauri and Tau Ceti. Maybe one day we might find dragon-like creatures flying around in one of its planets. What a wonder that would be. In our final graphic, we're going to move away from Earth-like worlds, in fact, to Saturn's third largest moon, Iapetus. Let's see what our local family stars would look like if they were to replace the Sun in the centre. We see the beautiful Chasmata cliff-like structures and beautiful green colours of the Iapetus surface, and slowly appearing on the left, the Sun from Saturn appears something like this depiction here slowly appearing at around minus 21.8 apparent magnitude, that's roughly what we would see from, from the Iapetus. Sigma Draconis is substantially dimmer than the Sun and would be more like the light at Uranus. Richard Cantorus, the brightest G star class in our own local area, also known of course as Alpha Centauri A, would bring substantially more luminosity to the surface of Iapetus, although it would remain out, far outside the habitable zone. The famous Epsilon Eridani is thought to have at least two, or possibly even three, asteroid belts. Binary pairing now at 61 Cygni is followed by the beautiful Tau Ceti with its planetary system, perhaps the nearest star that could harbour complex life, who knows. Some more of the beautiful stars, Epsilon Indi has two known brand brown dwarf companions, an interesting place that must be. Groombridge 1618, as we've already mentioned, is the smallest star in our local area, it's not a red dwarf category. The strangely named Obricron Eridani is one of the brightest K-class stars, is not too far off a solar twin. Finally, the Eta Cassiopeiae double binary pairing includes the family beautiful G-class star and second brightest only after Rigel Pintorus. In many ways these stars are the perfect stars to target and aim for our first, the first extrasolar probes. The search for life one day will focus on places like the beautiful Tau Ceti with its warm habitable planets or perhaps admittedly with imagination, flying dragons, of Sigma Draconis. We'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our Brightest Star series and add a subscribe if you enjoy the content as it does help the channel grow. Don't forget to check out the main channel page and for other interesting videos and I'll see you on the next one.